The warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science, storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen to empower your children. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is... Hi, I'm Rob. I've worked in Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 in village schools and in Milton Keynes. And I'm Nicola, and I've taught Key Stage 2 from Year 3 all the way to Year 6 for quite a few years now. And I've also taught at university, inspiring future teachers to do the best they can in education. And today we are exploring what maths we can teach with our original story, Exploring the Water. Cycle. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for drip, drop, plop. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an epic educator, you'll also get a copy as a paperback illustrated by Corky Paul's cracking protege, Mario Coelho, as well as the full audiobook for you to download at any time. In fact, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's signed up to be an Epic Educator so far, because by doing so, you are also supporting this podcast, so we can keep sharing these off-the-shelf lesson ideas every week. Right now, though, let's continue our discussion with Rob, Nicola, Drip, Drop and Plop. And yesterday we were swimming in English objectives. Are we going to be as doused in maths objectives we'll we'll start again with you rob because i don't know whether i'm misinterpreting the smile on your face but do you want to let us know what you found for ages four to seven i've got a couple of ideas i can dive into all right whether they turn into a bit more of a belly flop i'm not sure (laughs) we'll see the first idea was kind of looking at the three times table thinking about multiplication starting to introduce it to upper end of the age range, so six to seven okay. year olds, I'm looking at the three times table because there are three droplets. Mm-hmm. So I would start thinking about, oh, if each of the droplets met two people, or how many other droplets did they meet? Maybe not people, mm. or if they were each involved with a certain amount of cement mixes, or you could use different examples from the story, multiplying it by three. You could kind of use it as a, a starter to your maths activity, or you it could be kind of a gap fill we've got to do some work on multiplication. So let's think about how we can incorporate this into it. Mm. And you could go beyond 12 times three. And you could say they all came together and they decided to help in the canal to lift the the boat. Mm. So there are three of them and they each met 30 people. So you could, yeah, you could really push your more able key stage ones to explore that and challenge them. Mm. And the other idea that I came with was to do with volume and capacity. Okay. Volume and capacity are to do with liquid, and the main characters are liquid. Hmm. So kind of exploring different ways of measuring liquids, and this would go throughout the age range. So with your four-year-olds, it could start with this container holds more than this container. Hmm. Uh, It's lighter, it's heavier. Starting to use words like that. This is the heaviest one, this is the lightest one. And then you could start looking at, the measurements that you use as well which would definitely come into the key stage two as well but you could start touching on it with your key stage one children yeah the, the relationship between volume and weight is definitely a good one to explore isn't it because i think water is the standard for that pretty sure i remember somewhere that a 100 milliliters is exactly the same as 100 grams yeah 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 so that like with your key stage one children you can say okay so we're not looking at standard measurements but how many of these cups do you think will fill a bottle or a container yeah. so you're using your your measurement skills and your estimating skills as well mm. and you can maybe get two 250 milliliter bottles or fill two bottles up to 250 milliliters and put them on some scales next to one bottle that is 500 milliliters yeah, yeah, and see yeah. whether they balance each other out measurement Sorted. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose since the drops are falling from the cloud, you've got a, a great way into that sort of activity by pausing the story as well. You don't necessarily have to wait for the stories over before you can 
jump into it. No, absolutely. Literally tap into that engagement <laughs> while you can. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> yeah, we'll just stop the recording now. That's it. We don't need any more. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, because they're all falling at. Uh, well, they're all falling in different places and they encounter different things you could mm-hmm. you could bring those in as well so you could say okay well do you think that the i think plop falls into a canal so does the canal hold more mm. water than where drip falls first mm. so you, you could pause it throughout the story but you could kind of summarize it all and say okay well which one encountered the most droplets yeah oh that's a good one that's a a, a subtle variation in the sort of leg cricket that you usually get us doing (laughs) instead of how many legs do they encounter it's how many droplets do they encounter yeah excellent as we trickle up the ages though to (laughs) seven to eleven oh they're they're all boring thick and thuffs now aren't they what's the maths learning you have for us nicola well can't rise to that wonderful um, pun you just made there how far did they travel like they went to so many different places all the droplets went to different places where did they go and how far did they travel obviously you could think about miles you could think about kilometers so converting metric and imperial units obviously there's addition there and addition potentially with decimals which is always a good challenge for children Mm. maybe rounding up the numbers rounded up to the nearest a thousand miles or a hundred miles whatever you find appropriate but doing a little bit of research and then using those numbers to think about distance mm. and who traveled the furthest maybe they could have a bit of a vote but who traveled mm. the furthest then also same with rob maybe the liquid measuring i think that's a great idea actually personally the more you talked about that i thought it's brilliant it's hard to find a way into liquid other than getting the containers out and sharing them with the children and, and getting excited mm-hmm. but there is a wonderful opportunity here in context i won't go on about that because you've mentioned that rob but i thought that was brilliant and also thinking about temperature the temperature of the water of the air and then using the idea of temperature to create perhaps a line graph of temperature over time at the end of term it became very very hot and the children could take what was the temperature in the air and then thinking about the droplets and how when they had that same temperature and comparing the temperatures and again yeah. you've got an opportunity then for minus numbers so when they're in yeah. you know the freezing cold temperatures you can say how much colder was it from this temperature to this temperature so yeah. again the difficult parts of mass but having a context to share them and a motivating story behind it i can certainly see how you're getting the negative numbers in there mm. just Can you elucidate a little bit more on how you'd bring decimals into it? Well, decimals more in terms of it's 5.6 miles. Well, obviously it's much further distances, but the actual Hmm. distances won't be in whole numbers necessarily. So, and actually thinking then if it's in kilometres, if it's 5.6 kilometres, what does the 0.6 stand for? So a bit like Rob said in a previous podcast, you don't have to keep the same places in the story. It could be Hmm. local places. So it could be shorter distances that make it more manageable potentially. Potentially, but certainly for the upper, very upper part of the age range, there's no reason why they can't look at Montana and, and the Pacific Ocean and, and those distances. And it's very easy to find out that information on the internet as well. And I think they'd be quite yeah. motivated by that. I was just wondering whether another way would be to look at the relationship between one unit and another. Oh, yes. So Definitely. looking at milliliters is a 0.6 of a liter. That's going to be your 600 milliliters. If you have mm-hmm. 0.6 of a kilometer, that's 600 meters. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, and also converting them, how many miles in one kilometer, how many kilometers in one mile and so on. Hmm. That side of things would bring in decimals too. I wonder how big one of the droplets is. I don't have any thought on this or <laughs> myself as the creator of the story, but yeah, whether they are one milliliter each. So you could actually work out how many drips, drops and plops there would be in a single container. That's a lovely idea. I mean, even if it's not true, you can still use that as a, as a way into that discussion. Yeah. yeah good idea. That's sadly all we have time for in this episode, folks. If you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast, or if there's a subject you're soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, you can find us on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favorite podcast app. Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable, and enjoyable all at the same time. Tomorrow, Drip, Drop, and Plop will help us teach science. But right now, it only remains for us to say cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. soon.